Put my tone to John. No, I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling. Yeah, boy, you're leaning forward now, which is what I don't want. You don't want me to lean forward. I want you to be comfortable. Kora Pele, you must speak in the mic. Otherwise, we'll see you bang the teaser. Yeah, man, so Please I'm make sure that they can speak into the mic. Yeah, I'm, like, no, sorry, no. Sis. I'm also trying to to comply. Yeah, mm. um, the the reception you've got it. No, before before the reception. Yeah. What's umjwembe? I ask this because we are going continental as the panel yeah. show. We are yeah. going international, yeah. and people get very upset yeah. when we start speaking indigenous <laughs> languages. And they don't hear what you say. They can't hear, and they're like, "You guys must put subtitles." And we're like, "We don't have money." But maybe one day. What's that in English? Uh, it's like the dog with no owner, you know. A wild yeah, dog. A wild dog. A okay. wild dog is pandela. You know, it goes and gets its own food and and hunts and it belongs to no one. Yeah. How's Umjwembe. how's the reception been since our first episode? Everyone is like, "Yo, that Matondo guy. Where do you find these people, Pen?" Look, Chief. Uh, I I have to I have to acclimatize. I call Tabs and other them like Tabs. Hey, my new guys, you guys are messing me up. You know, I'm, I'm a, generally I'm a friendly person, you know. Sure. But I have to be more friendlier now because I see people at the airport and uh, back home and they're speaking and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, others are waving. Others are stopping me. Those who are bold. Yeah, it's him. It's him. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then I, it clicks later with, oh, the panel show, the TikTok things, sure. you know, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's also nice and... Uh, yeah, it's it's challenging, but I think I get I have to get used to the attention. Cause yeah. it's frustrating. Job was good. You're a friendly guy. Yeah. But on a day where yes, you don't yes, have money, you're yes, stressed you know, too. And you know. someone's like, hi, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I have to speak to Lomun to Lomun. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But you have to, because those are the people who listen to you, and those are the people that you've reached and touched. But you know, the biggest thing, the biggest gain that I think this thing has brought, except bringing me into you know, into the public and people knowing and hearing my opinions is people who DM me and ask to to be mentored. Yes. You know, I'm currently uh, mentoring six guys. That's amazing. Yeah. And and they're from all over. You know, one is in Northwest, the other one, uh, three are here in Gauteng, mm-hmm. the other one in KZN, the other one is in Gauteng, in, in Soshanguve. So those guys, they drive, they come and they see me and we talk. And they, we create schedules, mm-hmm. and and I give them the things that I think they should improve on. So that that part uh, has really showed me the 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 hunger that is out there mm-hmm. of people who really want to do better. Yeah. There's an audience of people who really don't want to always dance, yeah. but always uh, that they want to listen to my piano when they want to. Sure. But all that they want to do is to better their lives. And it's people from all walks of life. I mm-hmm. think there's a guy from who works at FNB. There's a guy who works at NetBank. There's a guy who runs his own small business. There's a guy who works at the Reserve Bank. He runs a big business. Jeez. And and he found my take on how I ran my taxi business interesting. Then he said, no, I need to meet this guy. I'm running a, you know, a motorbike business. Yeah. So I need to find out what strategy did he use? He has, he's having problems. And we spoke. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, if I were you, I'll do it this way and that way. And and those conversations, and I, w- I was like taken aback and I'm like, okay, this thing has power mm-hmm. and I'm able to reach. And one of the things that I've also noticed is that eh, I could not believe, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm just a guy. But when I looked at the numbers and these things, they just keep going and going. <laughs> but the strangest part is when Somebody who knows you sends you your clip, yeah, you know, on WhatsApp and saying, "Hey, I see you, man," you know, and yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It it is a beautiful, and it's thing. nice to be recognized even thing. by people that you thought knew you, because now they see different dimensions of you that exactly. they maybe didn't know. Exactly, they didn't know. What does mentorship mean to you? Look, it means everything. I am where I am because somebody took time and mentored me, mm-hmm. and then helped me avoid mistakes. So I think uh, it, it it helps. It, it, it gives you that edge. Sometimes a, a mentor is not going to tell you something that you don't know. Mm-hmm. They are going to tell you, confirm what you're actually thinking. Yes. And you need that confirmation because once you have confirmation, it then gives confidence. Mm-hmm. And then once you have confidence, even when you are supposed to fail, but if you have confidence, you, you do make it. Yeah. You know, so it builds confidence more than any other thing. And it also stretches people to say, don't be comfortable where you are. Yeah. There's, there's more pies to, to be made, there's more territories to be taken. You can do better. And and when a person asks me how much is is too much, and I'm saying, 
why would you want to put a limit? Just see how far you can go. Yeah. All that you have to do as a person, just develop a good character. So that when you've got a lot, mm. you can help a bigger people, you know. What is the difference between mentorship and apprenticeship? Well, apprenticeship, I, I, I take you and, and you do as I do. Okay. Because I've been an apprentice, fortunately. Okay. You know, when I finished school uh, at, at TNT, then it's TUT now. Mm. And then I went and I worked at ESCOM, Krill Power Station. It was still ESCOM then. It <laughs> the, was still the, the real ESCOM. The real ESCOM. <laughs> Look, let me tell you how ESCOM was different then than what it is now. I get to ESCOM. We are the first cohort of black people to be to be taken in who are qualified. Obviously, we're finding the, the Africaners who owned that area, so you yeah. had to speak in Africans. Yeah. But one, one of the things that I liked when I got there, you know, I, I, I get my own room, ne? and the room gets cleaned every day. My sheets get changed every day. Hmm. I get three meals a day, and I get a pass from where we, we're staying at the compound to work. And then at work, every Wednesday, we get food parcels. Yo. I'm, a, and I'm, I'm an apprentice, and I get 2,100 a month in 1996. Was that good money? That was good money in 1996. Okay. People are getting stipend of 2.5 now, now in this government. With inflation? We consider the inflation. <sighs> then, you know, when I did not have anything to do with the money. Mm. You know, I did not have anything. You're, yes. f you're fed. You have a I, place I, to stay. I was fed. You're being passed. In, in our rooms, we had telephones, telecom, uh, telecom telephones yeah. were given to us. You know, each and every room had a, a telecom phone. Hmm. So when I wanted to call home, I'll pick up the phone, I'll call home. Obviously, there were struggles that we were fighting, yeah. you know, this, that, and the other, you know. So, but other than that, no, we we're good. Did you, did you enjoy the time? I did. I hmm. did. I Even did. though you were working with white Afrikaners no, who I are did. probably racist. Though. No, they were racist. Guess what they did to me? No, mm. but fortunately they met their match. Uh, my, my, <laughs> my first day, I am there and they're saying, okay, this is what you're going to be doing. This you're going to be doing. This is the person you're going to be talking to, mm. and and all those things. And 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 so sure. and I'm like, okay, uh, what what am I supposed to do now? Say no, we are going to go to another power station. We're going to do maintenance there. But on our way there, mm. we are going to hang you on the tree upside down because that is part of the initiation. initiation. And I'm like, is me there, two white guys, not three white guys and one Indian guy. Mm. The Indian guy came a year before me, he says, no, they did that to me. And I'm like, you're going to hang me upside down the tree. So you know what, when you take me down that tree, I'm going to step all of you. Mm. I'm not going to report you, except your stick. Jeez. But no, it's, it's, I'm not it's doing, just for fun. It's initiation. No, no, Everyone I'm not does it. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Did they initi initiate you? Say, yeah. I said, no, if you are great, I don't. Yeah. But I created enemies. Hmm. You know, my stay there was not easy, you know. But I learned a lot. Sure. I learned a lot. Yeah. And ESCOM then was still ESCOM. And the strangest part is that when I was still doing my apprentice there, ESCOM CEO hmm. came to address us because he comes every year when the new engineers come in yeah. to address it. Landed with the chopper and then he came there and then he said to us, guys, how are you? And then he gave us the culture of ESCOM and everything. Hmm. But he, he gave a paper, said on the paper, in 2007, we are going to run out of energy. At the rate this country is growing, if we don't do anything in 2007, we are not going to cope with the power uh, demand. Hmm. And I'm like, 96, 2007. And through Bob, 2008, load shedding started. And it reminded me of what the CEO said then. Sure. So to anyone who does not know, look, load shedding did not take us by surprise. Mm. We just did not do anything. Hmm. Going back to apprenticeship. Yeah. So apprenticeship, you're saying, is learning by doing. Learning by doing. On the, on the job, they give you the tools, you go there, you yeah. You know, but mentorship, I come and I speak to you and, and I and I show you things, possibilities. Yeah. That, okay, if you do this, this can happen. If you do this, this can happen. Mm -hmm. And I and I allow you to go and do your own mistake and then come back and say, Okay, I've done this, this did not happen. Okay, try it, do this this way, do it that way. Mm -hmm. And 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 mentorship is having that somebody whom you can bounce 
ideas. If I'm thinking of something, yeah. like I'm thinking of going to wherever and do a new business, I'll call my mentor and say, what do you think of this business? Yeah. And then he'll ask me a question. Did you consider this? Did you consider that? Did you consider this? Okay, I've got someone who's in that business. Mm. Go and speak to them. They might give you a better perspective. That's what mentorship is. That's one, one of the things that I did for the guy who's in F&B. He okay. said to me, I want to meet... Uh, the CEO of West Bank. And I'm like, oh, I know the guy. I know the guy. Mm. Let me see if I can organize for you. You know. Then I called my friend and then we, we spoke. He said, sure. no, my schedule is busy. I said, okay, no, it's fine. You'll see the guy whenever you can. But here's the guy's number. Mm. And then he says, no, give it to my PA. And then the PA arranged. Then the guy called me a week ago, no two weeks back. He said, hey, man. Finally, I got to meet the guy. And then he's drafted. we spoke and he's given me the program. And that's what mentors do. Okay. You know, they just open doors and you must, once the door is open, then you can go and see what you can do. How do, how do you filter who to mentor? I've had a lot of people ask me to send your contact details because they want to be mentored. Yeah. They like how you speak. They yeah. feel you're relatable. Yeah. I probably get uh, 20 mentorship requests for myself a week. How, how do you filter who you get to mentor? At number one. And then number two, how do you get to decide who to apprentice with? It's it's a tough one. Mm. It's a tough one. Uh, but so far, fortunately, I haven't been snowed under, you know. I tell them that I'm not, obviously, I'm a busy person. But there's a saying that if you want anything done, you must give it to a busy person. Yeah. And uh, I, I listen to, I give everyone a chance mm. uh, to come and present to me and tell me what they want me to do. Mm. And you know, during those interviews, I, I give them tasks. Tasks that I give are not easy. If, if a person is able to go through those tasks, it's, it's, first of, it's, it's the, the first sif. Mm. And all, always I try and feel people because I always want to have and be around people who have good energies. Okay. Yeah. I, I try and not only listen, sure. I listen and, and, and then I try also to feel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't ignore my gut feel. Okay. You know, yeah. I don't ignore it. I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take for granted the fact that I'm not only just a body blood. I'm also, a, there's also something that is in me. Mm. There's a spirit that is in me. Okay. And the spirit that I carry is, is what oozes around me when I'm in a room. Mm. You know, if I'm in a room and people are comfortable, they can laugh, they can talk. Then I've got those things. I don't bring, you know, energies that will depress people. So I, I choose... Because also I've got limited time on earth. I can't really be dealing. I hear you. You know, with, with dragging. I must go with people who are going. I remember sitting here with Rob Hersoff yeah. um, last year and we spoke about mentorship. And one of the things he was emphasizing was he'd love to create a space. And I echoed his sentiments where especially young black kids, black and colored mostly, um, get mentors. Because realistically, Rob said, all the white kids I know, they have mentors. If it's not at home, the person that can connect you to the West Bank CEO might be yeah. your dad yes. or your uncle yes. or someone at church. The black kids don't have that. The white kids have it. Yeah. And I remember after that, I was inundated with DMs. And to this day, we haven't been able to follow through on that. Mm. And one of the things I realized was, I know there are platforms for mentorship in this country. And I think they're just not as popular as they should be. Because mm. you want to volunteer let's say five hours a week yeah. and get on a platform and you schedule and they, and they, you tell them these are the type of kids or people I'm looking for. And then they say, okay, we've scheduled. And you're like, I'm, I'm good to go. Cause managing that on your own means you never get to those people. Yes. Um, which makes me very sad. I, I, I worry cause the one aspect of mentorship for me that I learned over time was mentorship is me and you. I meet you. We try to have a coffee, etc. But I've been mentored What's the right word? I've been mentored at pe by people that don't know they're mentoring me. And one of my first big mentors was Robert Kiyosaki. When I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Poor Dad yeah. I felt like he was speaking to my soul. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people quote him for personal finance teaching. But he was more than that to me. He changed how I view money. Yeah. He changed how I view governments. And he was so relatable in explaining, this is how the rich think. This is how you as the middle class poor think. And this is where you messed up. And I felt I was being mentored. And I think a lot of kids today are being mentored. Because, you know, when these kids DM me, Pen, I want you to mentor me. I'm like, on what? No, on, on maybe business or relationships. I'm like, I speak about that stuff 
in my videos every day. Why don't you just watch that? Why do we need to meet? If you've got a question, you can put it in the comments and say, thank you for this opinion. But yeah, some of us, yeah. we I'm like, I'll make a video at some point because there isn't enough time. No, there isn't enough time. No, there isn't. There isn't. Look, it's, 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 it's a blessing and luck that you, you, you have time that you can spend and, and give it to other people. It's, it's a blessing to you as a giver. It's a blessing to the receiver. Yeah. You know, because it's not something that it happens to, to, to everyone. Mm -hmm. The fact that I'm able to do it, it's, it's not, it shouldn't be taken for granted by me because I could be sick yeah. and not be able to do it. Yeah. You know, the fact that I'm, I'm well, I should take advantage of those things. Sure. It's like when you have legs, you should walk and run. Yeah. There's someone who does not have legs who wish they could walk and run. So those who do, they must use what they have. Mm -hmm. That's the principle. So having said that, I think maybe if there is an organization, I used to, where, where I go to church, they used to have that part as part of the church yeah. where you register to become the mentor mm -hmm. and the, mentor, the mentees come and register. Mm -hmm. And then they, they'll organize and then you go and meet and do all those things. And 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 yeah. But yeah. So I am not sure, but I think if there is an organization like that, then those are the organizations that we need to unearth, bring them to platforms maybe like this, mm -hmm. and then make them popular, and then so that people who want to be mentored can come. You know. Okay. They wanna see me outside, so I must leave these cameras and go. Yes. Okay. I'm coming back, people. I'm going outside. I'm not running <laughs> away. Just let them know you got your 40 minutes. Yes. <laughs> That's the earliest man I've ever seen. Really? 40 minutes early. I'm trying to calculate if he's the earliest, but he was definitely very early. Oh, he was early to the gate. That's the problem. That's not a good thing, by the way. Um, I've learned that there's various ways of impressing people. And there's a timing to it. So if you're going to meet a potential mentor, if you're going to meet someone who is of interest, you have to arrive early enough for them to be impressed, but not too early that you annoy them. <laughs> so, or, so or make them feel like they have their pants down. So you have to meet someone at 10. You need to get that quarter past nine because anything can happen, traffic, whatever. Get that. But don't knock there and be like, I'm here now. It's like, Baba, we're still busy. Now the guy's like, hey, there's a guy waiting. Hey, Baba. It's a hindrance. Now the guy's like, ah. so you want to get there at quarter past nine, check exactly where you're going to be, confirm, okay, and then disappear. And then at quarter to 10, send a message or let them know, look, I'm here for the 10 o'clock. And they're like, oh, you're early. And you're like, so it's 15 minutes. And to them, it's early enough, but it's not annoying where you, yeah, so he's been waiting since half past eight. Ow. So it's but our meeting's at 10. Does this guy not have a thing to do when it's, you know, it gets frustrating. So, I was gonna also say that for your thing of not chatting, I think what you can try is to have a green room so you're there with the guests, man. Okay. Them, for instance, we sync in here. It's a bit of technical chat. There. Okay. Hey, it might sound good, and you just walk, walk in, in the and start chatting. Sit down. Mm. Okay. It's a brilliant idea. Thank you. Mm. Okay, are we continuing? So, so to carry on with my my thoughts with the Kiyosaki. Mm. A lot of kids have access to mentors that we didn't have before in yeah. the form of books, yes. in the form videos. of videos. Yes. Um, sometimes you can attend yeah. sessions. Yeah. T.D. Jakes can come to yeah. South Africa and, yeah. you know, you listen to him or maybe yeah. you even get a yeah. chance to engage. Yeah. I worry that we are in an age of too much information, too many mentors. Um, we're overstimulated. Mm. And we're not getting to the apprenticeship. To so the I'll doing read, part. I'll read yeah. all of T.D. Jake's books. Yeah. I'll visit all his seminars yeah. and save money. Yeah. Um, I might even be in a room and engage him. Yeah. But at no point am I shadowing him or someone like him. Because I, I think part of what's wrong with this country is mm, I we have you. a lack of mentorship. I People you. that are going to guide you. Because yeah. we don't know where we're going. Yeah. I remember posting something saying the reason you are not where you want to be is because you're not moving in that direction. Yeah. I want to have a Ferrari. Ah, Siakbongel. Mm. Well done. What are you doing today? No, but the thing is, I'm still here at KFC. No. If you want a Ferrari, the least 
the least you can do is find out where Ferrari dealerships are. Yeah. Visit them. Yeah. Say, ask, how much is a Ferrari? How yeah. much is the installment? You know you, what you're working Now on. you know what you work. Can I yeah. sit inside it? Yeah. Can yeah. you start it? Okay. Yes. I'm going. I'm at KFC now. Mm-hmm. How do I move from KFC to a Ferrari? No, yes. you need to be a franchisee. You now you are moving in the direction. Yeah, yeah. People are. I want to be rich, but you're not. So we need mentorship to steer, and to tell you doing this wrong and try this, and then very importantly, to try and give you shortcuts. And I'm going to ask you. This, that's going to be my question when I'm mm-hmm. done with this, about the shortcuts, because shortcuts come at a cost. They do. For you to be friends with a CEO, with a politician, with a certain celebrity, mm. um, it cost you your life. Mm. I know the the some of the Jewish people speak about how money is life. For me to make a mm. hundred rand in an hour means it's an hour of my life. Mm. And when I donate a hundred rand to you, mm. I've donated an hour Peace. of my life. So there's a cost. I'm like, do you know what it cost me? To me, to Sfiso Madonna, and why we met and how we sat. Mm. I may have paid him, he may have paid me, mm. and now I must just link you. Mm. Um, people need to understand that value. And it's not necessarily a money. It's it's whatever it is. It could yeah. be time, etc. My point is we, we have mentors and we have a lack. That's one part that we need to fix. And the best mentors we will never get. Patrice is one man with about 60 million South Africans. Every black person wants to meet Patrice, but mm. he has to work he has his family. He has, he can't meet you. Mm. You want to meet the guy who is six levels down from Patrice, who has access to that head and that head and that. And all of those guys filter down. You know, when I sat with Patrice, he told me this. Hey, you know, when I was sitting with the guy who knows Patrice, he was saying, saying you know, when I was sitting with the guy who knows the guy who knows Patrice. Yeah, so yeah, by the time yeah, you yeah. get here, like, at least I'm yeah. getting some of Patrice's yeah, wisdom yeah, yeah. without knowing the guy. Exactly. Exactly. But my bigger issue is the apprenticeship because we've got TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Online resources, Wikipedia, Google search, Yahoo, mm. f- libraries, which kids don't use anymore. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, which kids use for rubbish. You've accumulated all of this. You can quote uh, the commander-in-chief, Julius. Yeah, you know when yeah. Julius said, you can quote. The CIC. <laughs> but how are you walking? And I, 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 you know, I always get bashed for speaking about Afrikaans people. I'm a born. One of the things they were very big on was the apprenticeship. I won't mentor you because I don't know how to teach. Mm. But come spend time with me. And see what I do. See what I do and I'll show you around and I'll tell yeah. you, you know, it's yeah. 11 yeah. spanner. Look yeah. here. It's got a yeah. number there. Yeah. And yeah. so now you're you're learning yeah. through doing. And yeah. we've got a culture now in South Africa of especially our politicians where they're always hosting workshops and seminars. I hate that My talk shop. I need to mind you, that's mentorship, Moss. No, that I, is the mentorship, no, but... Mara, it's not doing anything. Look, look, let me tell you a story. I, I've, I've been gifted this thing. This thing of talking has been with me for some time. You know, even when I was still at school at tech, I was, I was one of those guys who'd be invited to be an MC, to talk and to do. So all my friends, you know, around that area, they said, okay, let's be motivational speakers. And they went and they became motivational speakers. Some became good. And I said to them, I am not joining you. And they said, why are you not coming? I mean, people like listening to you. And I said, I said to them, I don't have anything that I've done that I can look back and say, I've done this thing. Then when I speak to people, I can relate my experience to them. I don't want to talk that so-and-so said this, hey, hey, rise and what, what, and, and you know, show up this. When I say to you, show up, I must tell you what, this is what I've done. This is how I've showed up. Mm. And this is what showed, showing up did for me. And this is what I mean when I say show up. Mm. I don't want to say show up as, as, as a thing that will make the crowd go, yeah. No, I don't want that. I hate those. That's the reason I hate workshops. Mm. I don't go to them. I don't want to do them. All that I want to do is when I speak about something or the person that I'm really interested in listening to is somebody who when they speak, I look behind them, they have achieved. Mm -hmm. And whatever they're telling me is not going to be something that they read from the textbook only. It's going to be something that they read from the textbook, but they can relate to their everyday life. So hence my delay of starting to speak. Mm -hmm. But now that I think I have accumulated enough that I can look back and say, you know, I lost this thing here and this is why I lost it. Now I know 
what they mean when they say, listen to your gut. Mm. I started listening to my gut when I lost my first kumbi. Mm. I always knew that I have this thing that makes me feel comfortable and uncomfortable when I'm doing business. Yeah. But I never took it seriously. Sure. I bought my first kumbi. I fixed it up and it took a trip to KZN. It was a good Friday, I remember. Mm. I got the payment as they were going down. I said, no, you'll pay when you come back. Mm. They went and the trip was successful and the guy called me, says, no, we are here. But I always, I always said this thing that is uncomfortable about this trip. And I said, but why am I uncomfortable? Because they made it there. The following day on Saturday, I got a call from a towing company saying, your car is here, it has capsized and it has killed the person. The driver is drunk. You know, and then I knew it exact. I knew then, with, you know, this thing was telling me about this thing. And ever since, it does not matter how good the business still looks to me. Whenever I'm going to do anything, I listen to the gut. If I'm happy with the gut, I go ahead. Even though sometimes when the numbers don't make sense, sure. if my gut says, do this thing, I go and do it. Like, for instance, how I met you. Hmm? I listened to your video. And I'm like, there's something about Penwell. Your cat was happy. And my cat was happy. <laughs> and I said, okay, what's required to meet this guy? And I went and I saw, okay, he charges per hour. And I said, okay, no, let me pay him. Yeah. And, and I paid you and we met. And look, I don't regret that day. I did not think it would go as far as it went now. Yeah. But my cat then was happy. And I followed that thing and all the businesses that I'm doing. I try a lot of things in my life. Mm. And now that I'm 50, I don't want to try quite a lot of things because I'm at the age where I should consolidate. So I really depend and rely on my gut to hire people, mm. to take on projects, and to take on things that I need to do and to try new things with the money that I used to gamble on trying new businesses. I rely on my gut heavily. So my gut is natured to such an extent that even when I drive around the country mm. and I give somebody a lift, I listen to my gut before I stop. Mm. To say, okay. If it's a pretty lady, the cat is like, yeah, lift. If it's a pretty lady, if he, he out, if he he out like, hey, you know, you know, me. you know. No, but, no, but now we check everything. I'm we kidding, check, I'm kidding. We check all the ladies, we check the guys. And if my cat says, no, it's fine, then I stop and then I give you lift and you go wherever you go. And I drop you, usually I don't charge, you know. And yeah, that's, that's me. So when I say to you, listen to your cat, mm -hmm. I will then give you a story behind. That's when uh, uh, apprentice, and that's where I think we fall short on these things. Are my workshop? This I hate workshops. They don't. They haven't delivered anything. They haven't. Yazi, you you're making me want to deviate to the lend you a cut, and lend you a motivational speaker. Yeah, which is fine, because I know at some point there's a certain topic I want us to speak about, which which you raised back then. You you can only speak about the privilege of cut in hindsight, though. I hope you're aware of that. Yes. Which means you can't advise a 20-year-old child to follow their gut. You can. You are born with your gut. But, but it's, it, you, becomes, you must, it becomes their experience. No, no, you must nurture it. No, you must nurture it. You must, the fact that you know that there's something that you need to nurture, and then you can start nurturing. Imagine you have to start nurturing your gut, and you don't even know that it exists. So let me, let me say this. I was on Podcast and Chill. Yeah. And one of the things I said there was the way money was introduced to black people was yes. traumatic. Yes. And when you, when, you raise, yeah. when you raise the topic of money to yeah. the majority of black people, mm. it's a traumatic conversation. Yeah. Because they think accounts, they think debt, yes. they think we're poor. Mm. Now, my assumption would be people that have that type of experience with money, their gut has been sculpted in a certain way. Yeah. So when you tell them to follow their gut, they will almost never venture into certain spaces where they might get burnt, but where they might win. Because the gut for a person who's never really traveled of getting on an airplane to a foreign country mm. can't be the same as the gut of someone who grew up in a family where you've been on a plane before, mm. before you even knew what your gut was. Mm. And you now know comfortably. There are people that are scared to buy the first kumbi because of gut. Mm. You, no. can, you can... Speak about an experience with yeah. your gut based on, but there's the privilege of saying, like you said, I'm 50 now and my gut has been sculpted and I now have a, a feel for people because I've tried to trust pretty ladies and I've been scammed. 
I've tried to look down on yeah. ugly looking guys, yeah. but they've been my best business yeah. partner. Yeah. So you now have a feel, yeah. but trying to advise the next kid who hasn't been through that is almost dangerous because you don't know what traumas and experiences they have. True that. <clears throat> but here's the thing about the gut. It is always pure and it's incorruptible. You can't say that. I tell you it's true. You can't say that. No, I can. It's true. It's in, you can't corrupt the spirit. You can't. Madondo, your, your gut has been sculpted through experience. My gut has been... Or are you saying my, it's, not, it's my, not experience? No, it's not experience. My, me mm. listening to the gut yes. has been through the experience. My gut has always been there. Do you, think, do you think the masses of poor people are poor because they follow their gut? Because they don't follow their gut. You think their gut would get them out of poverty? I think they are, if, if they are trained to follow and look and listen to their gut, they will avoid quite a lot of things. So how do you think you got it right to be able to remove the noise and zone in on the spirit to listen to what you feel is the, is the correct guiding force? There's, there's this thing that uh, I tell people uh, and I credit, and, and I was speaking about it even yesterday, is that you know when, when, you, when you go to Europe, one of the things that Europeans did, and it, it used to be our thing, mm. they really, really treasure old buildings yes old structures yes so there's a lesson in that the lesson is don't demolish things that are old that have stood the test of time because you don't understand them and because they don't make sense to you mm. then mm. you know even in culture even in religion even in, so fortunately being raised up uh, 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 by a father who was a traditional Zulu man mm. and by a mother who was a staunch, strong Christian. Mm. So one of the few things that this combination did for me was it, it made me to be aware of that there's, there's, there's another part of me that is not visible. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it because there was a clash? It's, no, no, it's not because there was a clash. It's because they both ignited that part. You know, when in you, different ways? In different ways. When okay. you go to church, they tell you that you are three beings. You are spirit, mind, and you are a soul. Mm. And they focus on the soul. That's what church does. They focus on the soul. You know, you go. You are spirit, mind, and body. You, 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 your body. Okay. Uh, you, your mind, and and you, you, you the spirit. Oh, soul. Spirit, soul and spirit. Okay. Is used interchangeably. No problem. Yeah. So when you go to church uh, 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 places, they they really really emphasize on you know making sure that your spirit is it's okay. Yes. And then. I go to my father, mm. and on my father's side, my father, before he leaves, mm. you know, Yes. And when you look at that thing... Sorry, can you please translate that for people? <clears throat> so he burns incense. He, he, he burns incense, and then he speaks to, to, to his ancestors. Okay. You know, to say, now as a family, we are leaving KZ, uh, KZN, we are going back to Jobek, please protect us, and, 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 and. Yeah. and I'm there, I'm around that thing. And then he takes a goat, he slaughters it. Before he slaughters the goat, he speaks uh, to the ancestors that this is the goat that I'm bringing as a sacrifice. I'm doing this and I'm going. My child has passed metric. We want to thank. You know, it says to me, I am not only Body. This, this person that I see. Yeah. You know, and the intelligence that I have. There's something that is much bigger than me. So from a very early age, I started recognizing that there's, there's these two things that I need to enhance and really use. Mm. So... And, and I've also discovered, you know, with the information that I have mm. and with all the readings and with all the interaction that I do with other people, that you really, really need to go and, and tap into that part of you. It wants to help you. Mm. It wants to assist you. It wants to make sure that you avoid lots of things that are not right. How, how do you listen to your gut, soul, spirit today? I, I ask this for a reason. Yeah. Let's assume and agree together that forces in the world have created a huge barrier between us and our gut, yes. our spirit, our yes. soul. Yes. And they've done that by telling us about things like immunity, witchcraft, yeah. Yeah. telling us, oh, there's a devil out there, yes. Yes. telling us, no, you must chase money, yeah. you need to leave your, your family and your home yeah. for better. So they've created all these barriers between us and listening to the spirit. My question to you is, Today, with social media, mm. with people saying, ah, Omar Dondo's got a snake, mm. that's why he's got money. Mm. 
I almost don't was successful because of what, whatever is politically connected, whatever the case may be, all these things. Mm. How do you jump all of that and and manage to zone in? You're telling us now that it it was unearthed as a child, yeah. thanks to your parents yeah. and their beliefs. Yeah. But today with all the noise, yeah. how do you still manage to remove the noise and still listen and not just follow money, what's famous and what's what? I believe in structures. You know, as a builder, it, it, when 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 you are going to build this house that we are sitting under, it must have a foundation. Mm. It's a structure. Mm. Once you get the foundation, everything fits around. Whatever is not on the foundation will not go. Yeah. So what do I mean about structures? For myself, I've created structures. I wake up early. You know, I told you this morning. Mm. I wake up early every day. I try. Some days I don't. Yeah. But most of the days I wake up early and I've got a, 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 a pattern that I follow. Yes. That there's a certain time that I wake up. And when I wake up, I don't take my phone. I don't take anything. That is my quiet time mm. for the day. Okay. You know, where I, I'm sitting down with my book and my diary and I'm listening to myself. Listening. I'm listening to myself. I'm analyzing myself that yesterday I spoke to Penwell and I wasn't happy. Mm. What made me unhappy when Penwell said that thing? Mm. And I listen and I listen and I'm saying, oh, this is what made me unhappy. Then I get to understand me. Mm. What makes me happy? What makes me unhappy? How my day went? That one hour of being quiet is what makes me hone this thing to be even more sharper. Mm. Because you need to shut down the noise. And for me, in the morning is the best time. Yeah. No one will call me at half past four, five o'clock, mm. you know, unless there's an emergency. And there's there's nothing going on. It's just peace and quiet. Yeah. And I can hear the birds. I can hear myself. Mm. And I create this dialogue. I separate myself and this other person. And and, and I've got two of me yeah. sitting uh, uh, across the table. Mm. And this one speaks to this one. The same thing you'll do when you pray. Pray. Because when you pray, it's like you're separating yourself. Mm. You're talking to God. You've, you you must imagine God. You have to imagine something that is As a being. To. As a being, you have to imagine. When you do this, you mean external being. Ex- extent, l- you see, when, when I say I separate myself, what yeah. I do is I, I have Sfiso A and Sfiso B. Okay. And Sfiso A and Sfiso B talks. Sfiso A might be opposite on whatever topic that I'm dealing with. Mm. And Sfiso B might be like, no, it's going to work like this. And Sfiso A says, no, it's not going to work like this. And, you know, I, I, I go back and forth, back and forth, up until I get the equilibrium to say, okay, this, this I think is going to work. So this is how I horn and this is how I listen. And this is how I structurally and practically do this thing that I'm talking about. Because I have to do it myself. Yes. And, and this thing you do for you. Yeah. But if it works for you, then it benefits other people who are around you. One hour a day in the morning. In the morning, one hour a day. I start thinking of, so you, you spoke about listening to yourself. Yeah. You spoke about prayer. Other people speak about meditation. Yes. I'm trying to imagine you moving from one hour to five to ten. There are the gurus who yes. meditate for days, for weeks, for months, for years, and they're like, I'm listening because there's something I want to hear. Mm. Um, and I remember speaking to my two kids' uncle who converted from Christianity to Islam. Mm. And he was painting the just an example. This is not to say yeah. one is better yeah. than the other. Yeah. Just an example of Islam versus Christianity where he was saying a Christian will pray on a Sunday once. Mm. A Muslim will pray five times a day. Mm which compounds, which is five times seven, which is 35. Mm. 35 prayers of silence, mm. of connecting with yes, self versus yes, once. Yes. And what that does to you listening to your spirit and whatever higher being already puts you on a platform. I'm not, to, again, I'm not saying Islam is better than Christianity. Yeah. I'm just trying to speak principle. about this concept of, of listening to yourself. Exactly. In a space with so much noise. We wake up and with one eye open, you we look, hear on Twitter, like, hey, you keep on like, TikTok. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as you get up, you switch on the TV and then it's news. After the news, it's, news. it's people want to tell you what was on social yeah. media. When you're driving, the radio is telling you. When you get to work, the colleagues and the bosses. And we wonder how many people in the world have ever, ever kept quiet and listened. It's a tough thing. To themselves. It's a tough thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. I... I'm driving with my friend and he puts uh, part, uh, the other FM that does uh, news and and I'm like... 
you were gonna say Power FM. Finish yeah, yeah, your story. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't listen to such. I don't listen to talk radios in my in my car. Okay. Especially when I'm alone. I don't listen to 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 any. I don't listen to the news. I don't switch on the news channel in my house. Why not? I, I tell people that if it's bad enough, somebody's going to volunteer it and tell it to me. Hmm. I take my mind. If it's that important. If it's that important. I will hear it I from someone in my life. I will hear it from someone in my life. Someone will bring it to me if it's that important. Why? People don't understand. There's a lady. She, 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 she tells a story that she lost her mom. In the same month, she lost her baby. In the same month, she lost her husband. Hmm. And she says, I needed to be strong mentally. And she says, one of the things that people take for granted, if you want to develop strength mentally, is that you should shut up all the noise. He said, I, I disconnected from all the socials. I disconnected from all the news because I needed all the strength to build myself mm. back and mm. build mm. my mind. So when you listen to negative things... All your powers going... All your powers is leaking. We are leaking You said with nothing. You are left with... That's why you feel so hollow. That's why people go to things like alcohol and all these destructive things to try and fill themselves up because they are so hollow. These things are done not by mistake. These things are done purposefully. People who do run the systems, they studied us. They know how a human being behaves. They know how a, a human be, being reacts. Like there's a story that I, I read. This guy says, you know, there was a psychologist who came to his shop. He had a problem of theft from the staff and from people around. So he said, no, there's a frequency that a human being can't hear. But that frequency still runs. But the subconscious mind can hear. Just on that frequency, just go say, don't steal. Be good. Don't steal. Be good. He runs that tape throughout the day in his shop and nobody steals. Yes, yes. You're making me think of so many stories. So let me start here. Listening to yourself. Yeah. There are many people that are scared of being alone with their thoughts. Yes. My brother and I were having a conversation and he was saying he likes being around people. And I was like, at some point, you must be fine being alone. Yes. And he was like, ah, I'm actually scared of being alone with my thoughts. I'm like, that's dangerous. And that means you need to fix something. Mm. Because if you can't be alone with your thoughts and you're scared because they depress you, they worry you, they cause anxiety. T.D. Jakes says that the, the, the battleground, the mind is the battleground. It is. It is where the greatest conflict is. lies. And if you cannot conquer self, to what you're saying, you empower everyone else to conquer you. Exactly. You are a leaking bucket and everyone is sucking you dry. Yeah, that's the first one. The second one was, um, ah. so being alone with your thoughts, meditation, have I lost it? Ah, I've lost it. Mm. The mind and listening and being quiet. Oh, Uvusi Tembegwayo was here and one of the things I said to him, was I have this opinion that what we call our inner voice, yeah. and I know they normally counsel parents yeah. with this. They like say positive things to your children yeah. when they're young, because when they're older, that becomes their inner voice. Mm. Mm. If your mom was always, mm. you're ugly, mm. we are villa, you're lazy, mm. Mm. Uh, you won't mm. amount to anything. Mm. Mm. When you get older and every time you reach, you, you find adversity. That, that thing, reminds you that, that uh, my mom said, yeah. and it's like positive reinforcement. Yo, my do you're the, you're the, yeah. you're the most beautiful boy in the world. You're the smartest boy in the world. And when you're older, you're like, the reason I'm succeeding is because, and even in adversity, you're like, no, but my mom said I was good yes. looking yes. and I'm smart. Yes. That's your parents. I, I said to him, I have this theory of a board of directors in your head. Yes, and maybe it will be something I'll need to unpack yeah. somewhere on another day where you're speaking about Sfiso A and B. Mm -hmm. And I'm already thinking it's Sfiso A, your body current now, mm -hmm. which is plugged into the current environment. And when you're quiet, you're listening to Sfiso B, C, D, E, F. That's your parents, whether they were alive or not. And this is the part now about the spirit, even if they were not alive. Yeah. I don't know my dad. I'm like... Why not? Oh, no, he passed away. We ran. I'm like, your dad is in you because you were created with him. So if you keep quiet and you shut out not just current noise, but even your mom, 
your grandparents, your great grandparents that you've never met, just keep quiet and and be like, and this is where the prayer and meditation be like, Baba, where are you? What's happening? He may answer you in real time. And this is some people I feel it's funny. In real time, he might answer you in a dream where you're like, hey, I saw a, a mountain. Yeah. And I saw a park. I've never been to a mountain. I've yeah. never, and you're like, maybe your father's trying to tell you go somewhere or he's trying to tell you, it could just be a nice story. Yeah. It could be, he has in front of him, I used to uh, herd cattle or be a shepherd and or I, I used to hunt. Mountain. I love that. So yeah. I'm just trying to tell you a story. It doesn't have to be that deep yeah. that there's a mountain in life and the park. It could just be because we've never met. I just want you to, to see this thing. It could be when we listen to music, to what you're saying. Oh, yes. this was the third point. So there's a board of directors, in my opinion, and I'll unpack it maybe somewhere else another day. And when you meditate, you're listening to the voice and the conflicts. There's the external, but there's also Ukoko who's arguing with Iankeli, yeah. who's like, I mean, mama and you're like, Ish. And depending on who wins the <laughs> argument, they, that's where you're like, hey, you know what, don't buy this thing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know, don't don't speak to this yeah, person. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, it's me. It's yeah, it's a yeah. it's a board. Yeah. Um frequency is another conversation I had with my children's uncle and you speak about how they're not big on music in Islam because yes. Islam understands the power of music and the potential evil that can be embedded in music. Inside the music. And yes. frequency. Yes. Um, I spoke to a mentor of mine, very wealthy family, Indian Muslims, and we spoke about religion. And I asked him, are you really religious or are you religious for convenience? Mm -hmm. He's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, from what I've seen from wealthy people, they invest in the church for many reasons. Mm -hmm. Tax, uh, avoidance. One of those. Um, it could be giving PR, public relations. So you're marketing to the community. I would like to thank Mr. Madondo for donating to the church. Please don't forget to support his business so it becomes a PR. It could be for networking because normally a pastor is very connected and the pastor will get you the people that you want because you donate. Um, one of them is to keep people in check, mm. in check. Mm. And he laughed and he was like, no, I, I know what you're saying. He's like, look, I, I read the Quran every day and I'm very religious, mm. but I understand what you're saying. And he spoke about this concept of religion being the insurance of the rich. Mm. Because in the absence of human laws, where Chaos. you'll get arrested for theft, in the absence of surveillance cameras yeah. in the shop, in the absence of a security guard, exactly. there, there is meant to be in the human mind a big brother watching. Yeah. Even when you're alone, exactly. God is watching. God is watching. Don't steal. Yes. Uh, and to what you're saying about the replaying and the priming and the if you want people to be good, and this is now the conspiracies of rich, evil people that mm. they pump a lot of money into religion because they need the masses pacified as much as possible to even when the rich have been exposed for the most heinous crimes yeah. they will say what would jesus do what would prophet muhammad <clears throat> uh do you know uh, what would buddha do he'd turn the other cheek he'd say mm -hmm. peace be upon you mm -hmm. and in that way the rich are like Phew. i know these poor people never kill me because we've pumped a lot of money into schooling yeah religion to make sure that they are docile that's that's the that's the sad part your religion that i don't like but i'll get back to that uh, let me let me tell you something that i also i must investigate but i found that thing to be very 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 it comes to the concept of board of directors <clears throat> but it also confirms there's a verse in the bible that says a woman shall be saved by the child that they give birth to hmm. the salvation of the woman is on the children that they give birth to I don't know where that verse is, but I know it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's there. And and this guy is a scientist. He says, you know, we've, we've done a study based on that verse that we looked at all the mothers when they are sick. He says, when a woman gives birth to a child, there are cells that comes from a woman that goes to a child, and there are cells that comes from the child that comes to that goes to a woman. Mm. And when the woman is sick, these cells are the ones that rallies around and go and fight whatever makes the woman sick. What, what does that mean to you in in in, in normal term? Is is it is it is it saying that 
when the mom is sick, she must bring her child physically closer to her. It, it, it means that when you give birth to a child, whatever mm. the child remains, the remains of the child that remains in your DNA. Okay. So it, even when the child is away? Even when the child is away. Even if the child is dead. Even mm. if when you abort the child, the DNA of that child remains with you. Mm. And those cells are the ones that helps the mom to recover when the mom is sick. I found that thing very fascinating. You know, I had a conversation with a, a, a very staunch Christian guy yeah. before, and we spoke about Western versus Eastern African traditional medicine. Yeah. And the curiosity of how Western medicine, when you're sick, speaks about isolation. Now, isolation is something we know about in prison, solitary confinement, solitary which is used as a punishment. Yes. In Eastern African traditional medicine, when you are sick, you Pe don't isolate. People surround you. Surround yourself. Yeah. It, we speak about immune systems and building immunity, which you must get the illness. Like you have flu. If you're the first person to have flu this year, come, come get us sick so we can all get it and be strong. Like you're depressed. Go to rehab and be alone. No. Go spend time with your mother. Hug her. Let her cook for you and feed you. Listen to her old Dolly yeah. Parton yeah. and Rebecca. Go and your people. That's where the healing comes so from. So I'm, I'm trying to, th I, I thought you were going to speak about the literal, but you're speaking even beyond. And I'm wondering if it's also part of the father's DNA because the mom doesn't make a child alone. Yes. If that's also part of what's left in the woman, which you've got this stranger's <laughs> DNA, which you know, makes you stronger. Makes you stronger. It makes you stronger and it helps you recover. You know, so it, 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 it came back to me to say, look, there's this myth that's going on. You know, there's this thing that's going on. I don't know why people think that there's a lot of people on earth. There's no people on earth. You know, people think that Taban Dubaning. Eight and, billion. Yeah, and, and, there's, and, and the people who are saying we've got lots of people, they don't want to volunteer themselves to be killed. I mean, if there's a lot of people, it's like when you're saying, <laughs> when you're saying we are stuck in traffic, we are not stuck in traffic, you are traffic. Hmm. Remove yourself. If it removes yourself from traffic, the traffic becomes lesser. Eh. If you think about banning, you are too many. So let's kill you. So those people who, who, who talk like that, they don't want to die, number one. Yes. Number two, I mean, practically, just use normal logic. Don't want to complicate things. You can drive from here to KZN. I am telling you, we are going to drive through acres and acres and acres of land that are just sitting there idling and no one is there. You know, so number one, there's not many people. So this thing of saying there's lots of people, the problem is that those who want to control you, yes. they can't control you when you when you are too much. Yes. You know, there's lots of loopholes. There's lots of so. And this thing of encouraging our women not to give birth is bad. Mm -hmm. Europe is facing something that is called a population cliff. Mm -hmm. South Korea right now is number one in the world in that. They have a negative. And, and, they and are struggling. And once you, 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 there's no nation that is known to recover from that in history. They die out. They die out like they're like they die out. gone. Once, once you're in a population cliff, gone, you can't recover. It, it is not known in history. Mm -hmm. And now there's this agenda, you know, that girls must or people must not have kids. And I see it in my own kids. Yes. I mean, my own nieces and my nephews, they are 30, 40, they are not married, and they are not worried. They say, no, I'll see that thing later. Hmm. And I say to my girls, you know what I do with my girls? I, I sit them down, I get a, 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 a bowl of marbles, hmm. and I put them, I say, these are your eggs. Hmm. And they're all good at 20. And I scoop some, say, at 30, you are halfway. Hmm. At 40, you're almost empty. You're left with few, and all the fuels that are there are not good. They're not good. They're not good. And if you want to do that after 40, you might not be able to have a child. And you, you might not be able to have a child, not because you don't want a child, but because biologically it's no longer possible for mm. you to have a child. You know. And I say to them, there's nothing wrong about being a mother and being a career woman. You can do these things both. This mm. thing both. I mean, why, why should you have to choose one over the other? Mm. And, and I say to them, actually, Here's my take. I know people might not agree with me. Sure. Gatle, gatle, everything else is just a sideshow. The only thing that we are here to do is to procreate, multiply, and reproduce your genes and leave the earth. Everything else is a, is a sideshow. We are here to reproduce. Everything else is a sideshow. Everything else can happen, even if you don't do it yourself. Everything. 
But once we don't procreate, we are going to be extinct. It's, once the population cliff comes in, you are done. The man will remain. It's a sideshow. Side the shows will remain. It's a sideshow. Side but people will not be there. Yeah, so Elon Musk speaks about this. I know Nick Cannon's having a lot of kids. I've been speaking about this for the past 15 years. Yeah. We sound like we're crazy, like we're demented, like it's an excuse to have lots of sex and go around creating single mother households. I guess we don't, we don't consume the world and life the same. No, we don't. One of my, I don't know if you know the data, but one of my passions is crunching stats and data. And some of the stats and data that come out is if you were to take the entire 8 billion of us as human beings and put us next to each other, we would only fill up Los Angeles, which is one city in America, to explain how few Very we few. are. We occupy 1% of habitable land. Not all land. Some habitable. land is mountain. Some yeah. land is rocky. 1% yeah. of habitable land is 1%. human beings. And in South Africa, I think the stats is 1.5%. And that's nothing. Anyone who's ever traveled South Africa and speaks about overpopulation, they don't know what they're talking about. They are lying. You can you you don't have to go to KZN. Yeah. Drive 15, 10, 15 minutes out of Joburg. People that know Joburg, Mildes Drift. Yeah. South of Joburg, where you start going towards oh, oh Walkerville. Yeah. Go to the it's east, end. Mount Lula, oh Spread View, no Villa Lees. And it's, just look at that. Just here. It's empty. Places like Midrand are still developing. It's empty. Like it's a serious agenda. But we're overpopulated. But And you're like, no. you've bought into the story. No, we're not. One of the other things I wanted to speak about, because this ch topic of having children and our purpose is to procreate and keep busy till we die is something I'm deeply passionate about. And I'm glad you share it. Yeah. That's why you're in Pincham. That's why you're my friend. <laughs> um, cool. and, and I've got three. I regret. Yeah, yeah, look, you still have a little bit of time. Fair to yeah. Jacob Zuma fair to lead the way. So... <laughs> There's still a chance. <laughs> sure. Uh, you said something earlier, and I, I'm mm. going to reference my brother as well. My brother and I have debated a lot of things in our in, in growing up, which is makes it beautiful for me because not only do I get to speak to Sfiso A yeah, and B, yeah, panel A and B, yeah. I actually have a brother that, that I get to, to bounce things yeah. off outside of. And now I have a sister as well who's growing up and who's also now contributing to that conversation. And my mom, of course. We used to debate the motivational speakers thing. Yeah. And he was on your team. And I used to disagree a lot. Okay. He would say, why would I listen to a person who's never played for Bafana Bafana telling me how to become a Bafana player? Why would I want to get money advice from someone who hasn't built anything and become rich? Yes. I think I'm slowly converting him now. Yeah. Because my argument is this. A lot of people are angry and they hate motivational speakers. They feel like scam artists. Yes, they read books and they mm, reference mm, other people's stories, mm, but they don't know. Mm, they don't know what it feels call. like. Yeah. That million rand in the bank. Yeah, yeah. That getting your car repossessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a story. Yeah. Um, there are people that are gifted in different ways, in okay. my opinion. This is my... I'm not debating you. Yeah, yeah. I'm explaining the disagreement yeah. to your I wanted to build things first before I start speaking yes there are people with different gifts um some people are amazing at building amazing yes some people are amazing at and I think in penalism I speak about thinkers speakers and doers I think I speak about advisors kings and soldiers mm. a lot of the builders in my mm. what I've studied in the world are really bad at teaching and Terrible. passing on their story. Terrible. If you go and you ask J.D. Rockefeller, uh, the Rothschilds, if you go and ask Ernest Oppenheimer, if you yeah. ask Anton Rupert to yeah. tell you, yeah. and I'm, I'm just using names, yeah. a lot of them struggle to explain. And a lot of them, because they're so busy building, I mean, you're, you're on the field, yeah. you're playing, you can't see what we are seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes difficult for them to tell the story of, look, psychologically, this is what was happening and these were the decisions I made. And sometimes it takes the analyst. That's why a lot of these guys uh, hire accountants, mm. tax advisors, advisors, lawyers, bankers. 
because there are things they can't see that they need help with. Mm -hmm. And it's like, guys, you know, as rich as this guy is, he's helped by people that are not rich. Exactly. If you hear what I'm saying. Yeah. And I say to my brother, it's not really a good example, but extreme. Do you want to get advice on becoming a Bafana player from an any average Bafana player? Do you prefer that versus maybe listening to Robert Marawa explain to you what it takes to become, to become a good Bafana player? Yeah. Robert, we don't even know if he can kick a soccer ball. I've never seen him. No, he, he was on Simunye. Yeah, he was a celebrity and a presenter. Yeah, I was on a Simunye being pulled by a boat. I remember that part <laughs> when they, they, they introduced in the next program. So, um, so I don't know if he's good at soccer at yeah, all. Yeah. But, excuse me, and it's not just him. There are people that are good analysts. Yeah. If you look at some of the best business books, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, mm. he sat with a lot of wealthy people, yeah. Andrew Carnegie and all these other guys, to uh, JP Morgan, et cetera, mm. to try and build a case. Yeah. It's the reason we have academics. If you look at a lot of the politicians, especially today, they've never built anything. Mm. And sadly, the politicians are bad today. You know, but if you look at the apartheid politicians as an example mm. and what they built, a lot of what they built wasn't them. It was no, the builders. It was the builders, yeah. They were just politicians. Yeah. They might get the credit, but it wasn't them. It was Hendrik van der Peel who mm. wasn't a politician. Mm. It was whoever else that wasn't a politician. So my argument or counter argument to him, and this is where I'm, I'm winning my brother, is don't ever discount information, knowledge from someone just because they've never experienced something. They may have yeah. stumbled upon, and yes, yeah. it's not fair. Yeah. They may have stumbled upon Uma Dondo speaking about his experience in the taxi industry. Mm -hmm. And because they are gifted, yeah. Yeah. They someone like Trevor Noah, yeah. we don't know if Trevor Noah's built yeah. anything. Vusi Tembewa is yeah. one of the guys that gets criticized a lot. But they've analyzed, and they can take even if they heard you in an interview, yeah. I mean, no, Elon Musk are not good speakers. Yeah, no, they're not. And they take your thing and they they paint it in such a beautiful way that for the ordinary person, when you listen to T.D. Yeah. Jakes breathing yeah. fire, yeah. you listen to Miles Monroe, you're like, yeah. this guy's got a gift. And he can tell me the story of Nelson Mandela in a way that Nelson could never tell. No, I agree. One of the things that I, <clears throat> I've always been conscious of doing is because I grew up in an in an environment where I've I've always been told stories, so I am I try and and and, and hone my skill of my of talking and and be able to crystallize and 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 bring stories and and, and complex things in, in in a simplified way, because I understand the power of simplicity. Mm -hmm. Here's my take: if you understand something, and you can speak, then you are able to clarify it. In a simplified way, such that Umdano na three four can listen to you and understand you. Yeah, man. So here's my my take with what you are what what you are telling me is that everyone has got their own space. All that I'm I I, I don't like. By the way, I I, I used to not to listen to us because of the twang, <laughs> you know. But but I got over the twang and I'm like, no man, this guy is brilliant. Yeah. And 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 ever then I've I've been hooked. He's a knowledge merchant. That's the term he used. Yeah, I mean, I'm hooked. I, I've, I'm, I've, if, if, if you get over the twang, because obviously, I mean, Angeti, you know, there's those things. It's a bias. He's you know, white. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, because he's Nigerian. Yeah, boy, and, Why would and, I listen to a woman? You no, know, you know, we have biases, and they, they keep you from and, and knowledge. One, my biggest gain this year. My biggest gain, and and I got that thing from you. My biggest gain was I really need to have my team. I need to have my tribe. Mm. Does not matter where the person come from. Mm. If they fit into my tribe, they are my brother. Mm. You know, it helped me. It, that thing helped me in many ways. I can listen to a guy from who's a Muslim. Yes. Speak. I can listen to Umuto Santa Washembe. Mm. You know, I can listen to Umuto a Buddhist. Mm. As long as they speak what I want to hear and what I think makes sense, that's my tribe. Yeah. I, I've I've gone over this divisions that people make, you yeah. know. So having said that, I, I, I then go to Vusi over and, and, and I love how he says these things. Mm. But here's the thing that I think we need to do more is to get those guys who are doers, you know, 
and who got a little bit nyana gift of speaking mm. we must get them to speak 100% more. there are people that are gifted like abo penwell yeah. so that can take these guys that are doers and can't speak <clears> well <throat> and extract extract something yes. that even the person gets shocked with hey hey that yeah okay yeah that was me i think that's what i did yeah. um because it becomes a beautiful thing there are people with untold stories people lots. tell stories about them lots yes then there are people with untold stories where so, they just need the right we'll call it a lubricant sometimes yes. we try and sometimes it's yeah. but sometimes yeah. it's just in sang is, is weed uh, marijuana so, sometimes um, it's, an, it's an ear sometimes it's an ear sometimes yeah. it's a it's a way of speaking and to what you're yeah. saying energy energy you want the type of energy that makes you comfortable to be vulnerable exact be comfortable to speak and also be willing to be able to analyze yourself from the outside i think it's the reason why some people go to izangoma and uh maybe certain pastors because they have an ability when you speak to them no but yeah. my wife is frustrating me and yeah. yeah i think i should divorce you like i hear you and you're like okay so you met this woman on the side of the road and she was minding her own business and uh you interrupted her life mm. to come into your life and she's forsaken forsaken in inverted commas her family she's taken your surname she lives under your uh, mm. guidance and guardianship uh she has birthed children for your family mm. to expand mm. your family and she cooks meals mm. and she did these things and as a human being we are fallible mm. and she made a mistake here and there and now you're angry and the guys like hey, No, but when you put it like that, maybe I'm being too harsh. Like yeah. the ability to get someone yeah. to get out of yeah. themselves, yeah. Yeah. so A, yeah. because and they've never done mm, it before. Yes. And they've never made the time to yeah. be quiet. Yeah. And they need someone to, I don't need the silence, but I need you to almost be my conscience. Exactly. And and that thing is critical. You know, I was speaking to my, to the guys that I work with. Uh, I work with the, I'm, I'm actually, I work with the guys at the bottom of the food chain, if if you want to call it working class. You know, the working class, mm -hmm. and and we have this intellectual and 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 and, and uh, whatever you know discussion with them. And look, I get a lot of things from them, and mm -hmm. we are building. And I'm like, okay, guys, you know, we've put in bricks, and then we're trying to get the straight line. And I'm like, what are you learning from the straight line? He says, what do you mean? We are trying to get the line straight. And I'm saying, just think about the straight line and think about your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, if we are building, we are building a building now in Delmas that is 120 meters long. Hmm. So if we miss the straight line by a margin, a small margin, yes. I said to them, look, we can't, we can't do this thing. What we usually do, we take a, 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 a wire, yes, yeah, and uh, you know, a fishing string, sure, yeah, and then see if I get up on a thirty square at the corner, mm. normal square. And put it if it's short enough, we are going to get it right. Mm. But if it's long, we are not going to get it right. Yeah. So I call the lens survey, and then they're asking me, "Why are you calling the lens survey? Because we can do this thing." Mm. And I said to them, "Look, if we miss this thing by a small margin, when we get to the end, we'll be three, four bricks out. Yeah. The wall will be standing like this instead of like this. Yeah. So we need this thing to be done by a machine. They will tell us where is the straight line. And I'm saying, in your life." The reason I want you guys to go to church or have reflection time at least once a week is that you are given a time for two hours in your life to look at your breaks. Are they straight? Can I bring them back? Because if you don't do that at least once a week, at least once a week, imagine after 10 years, where will those breaks be? Mm. We'll look at you and say, what a disaster. Mm. What was this person thinking? This person did not do those small corrections mm. that you have to do every day. Whether you smoke, whether you don't run, mm. whether you run, whether you eat healthy, whether you don't eat healthy, look at the compounding interest. 100%. Look at the long distance. If you can develop that ability to be able to look down the strip, and then I make them an example. I say, let's say me and you, we go down the river. We go kindly. And then there's somebody who's telling us that, listen, guys, the direction we are going is where the water is going, but there's a waterfall there. Whatever you do, you must canoe your, your boat towards the, uh, the, the, the riverbank so that you can get off. Mm -hmm. 
and we ignore this guy. And we keep going, it's nice. You know, the, right, the water is going up and down, it's nice. And we are now three meters away from this thing. Mm. I tell you, you are doomed. Mm. There's nothing you can do there. Somebody should have warned you and you should have listened to the warning up the stream. Because now we are going down. I visit, um, I visit townships a lot. Yeah. For some reason, speak about gut and energy. Being a Kasi makes me happy. I don't know why, because I left the township when I was age five. Mm. And I've been living in the suburbs since then. Mm. But every time I'm in the township, there's a yeah. sense of peace. I visit um, informal settlements, squatter camps, mm. a lot. Mm. So I don't know the life of squatter camps, and it's a shock mm. to me. Mm. But one of the things that visiting squatter camps does to me is it gives me perspective. Yes. And when you speak to the people there, you realize, and this is always sobering for me, which is why I think every child who has done something wrong, they smashed your car, they took your car without permission and they, they wrote it off, they stole your money, they were involved with something at school. Take them to spaces where they can do community service with people that don't have. Like, let's say your kids now have attitude. Yeah. Go get them to volunteer at an orphanage with kids with no parents. Mm. So they don't tell them what's going to happen. So they can speak, what happened to your parents? And listen. To have that gratitude of, hey, yeah. I actually have parents in our yeah. home. Yeah. So when you speak to the guys in informal settlements, I always realize with a lot of them, not all of them, with a lot of them, all of us living better are one to three decisions away from there. From them. One to three. It's, yes. you like this girl, you meet her, she snorts cocaine. No, just try. I, I don't know. Hey, you're my drugs. Come on. I mean, don't you want to be with me? You're like, eh. I, okay, that one line of coke. Can now you're hooked. You yeah. Now you're stealing. Now your family is written off. Now you're an alcoholic. Now, let's say you're a woman, you're yeah. sleeping with people yeah. for money so you can get a hit. Now you're in a squatter camp. And when I ask, how did you get here? No, the thing is, what, and we track it back. And I'm like, it was one decision. Because yeah. you like this boy. No, because I decided to move to Cape Town. No, because I thought, I thought if we just, Chow some of this tender money. Compounding. Compounding. This is why ESCOM is collapsing. Over time. This is why Transnet has collapsed. Yes. This is why the post office, because the employees inside, every time they pretend the system is offline, we lose 30 minutes and you compound. You compound. Every time someone steals stationery and compound. you compound. Every time you don't service just this thing. I mean, you think of a, a leaking roof. If you don't patch that little thing, and the you give it five down. years, the whole ceiling comes down. The whole house. We, 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 we are at the farm and there's, there's, a, there's a house that is falling apart. And you know what makes the house fall apart? The grass. Just not cutting the grass around the house. Mm. The roots get into the bricks. Because it has time. Yes. It grows thicker and thicker. Nature and, can fight anything. Anything. It has time. So you see trees growing through, through concrete. Come on. It has time. So here's the thing. When, whatever you do, just look at the long distance. Look at the time. Mm. It's like when you're doing something good. Because this is what I, I always advocate people. One of the things that I've decided to do this year is just to crystallize what I do so that when I tell you, you'll understand what I do. I, I serve. I look for opportunities to serve. And I encourage other people to serve. And I say to people, if you serve and you do right by this person and this person grows up and they become a good person, all that thing, all the good things that this person is going to do, they can't be divorced from you. That's now good compounding. That's now good compounding. Bad compounding, whatever you do. My dad used to say something to me. I started working and I, and I bought top of the range like your... You, 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 you know, then, then I, I put a, a Opel Cadet 180 IS. Sure. You know, six gear forward. <laughs> Top of the range, you know, and I come home, I'm happy. And I show my dad, my dad is happy with me. My dad was very stingy. You know, in Africa, I used to say in Africa, it's a senach. Mm -hmm. uh, Your dad was like me. Yeah, he, he did not spend money for unnecessary things. Mm. You know, you only spend money for two things, food and education. Mm. Yeah, if you're saying to him, no, I'm going to start a business, this, that, and the other, he will want to see you 
prosper in that business by yourself and then only start supporting you when you can see what you are Pro- really proof into of concept thing. proof of concept then yeah. he will support you but he said to me uh, he said to me hey this guy is nice but my son le this money is not yours that's your kids money that you are squandering no. did not make sense then that's my man i don't have any kid mm. what do you mean must enjoy i've been to university Come on, you know i mean i've achieved the world for escort i want to live large you know i want to also recline my seat big speakers pump you you know and and push my car rims always clean you know and when he said that to me it did not click but now it clicks more often mm-hmm. in my life because i look at decisions that i make and i'm like okay what's the ripple effect of this thing in a long term in a long term how is this thing because everything good everything bad can be divorced from you fana no tswala you know drinking alcohol there's nothing you can do once it's inside mm. you only have an option to do uh, a decision to make and an option to make when liquor is on the table yeah. but once it's inside of you it takes over once you've made that decision that decision takes over it becomes automatic whatever happens becomes automatic so it it has made me to value those that one hour a day where i'm with myself because that's where i get to filter because i now understand the gravity of the decisions that i make in my life in the peop- the people that i live with life my kids my employees and everyone else and you know and the community at large that i live with and again that that thing i said about positive reinforcement from yeah. parents that your dad becomes your inner voice exactly before you make a dumb financial decision you know you, you remember that voice you remember that thing i don't think he, he understood that i'm going to have live with this thing for the rest of my life but now he's now through you now getting, getting we're, we're going to get to exactly empower so many other people with that thing that say look don't squander your children's money we call it a delayed gratification delayed gratification which is one of the things poor and lower middle class people need to understand that your one rand today if you spend it means you can't have a 10 rand tomorrow or in the future and exactly. worse see now we don't spend one rand today we spend five rand that is not ours with interest which is going to be another five rand so you're not spending one rand your one rand is your salary but the bank gives you another five yeah and over time that five is going to yield negative interest of another five so you spend 10 rand instead of investing one rent to make 10 rent for your kids exactly because you couldn't just say you now you're making minus 1000 for your kids yeah. look i i don't understand the philosophy and i don't understand the thinking maybe it's because i've not been there you know the guys when i pay them they go squash their money yeah they really squander it it's like they don't work hard you must see when this guys plaster they really work hard mm. it's hard labor is back uh, breaking work but you must see how they eat their money to Mark Manson I, I don't understand that part Mark Manson um it's a really nice it's I'm not sure which book it's from or yeah. if it's just a piece he wrote he's a yeah. really great thinker and writer yeah he speaks about how the way we make money affects how we spend our money all so right money is energy and i know he breaks it down in some way at some point maybe i'll share it or i'll reread the article but one of the things he explains is If you do not make your money in a harmonious yeah building way it's going to show in how you spend it you look at security guards domestic workers mm. who many of them feel their work is demeaning o manching elan who can yeah so the first thing they want to do as soon as they get paid they want to be seen as not that so they have to buy expensive clothing to be validated to be validated there are sex workers who as soon as they've made money some of them have to get on medication because of how they make their money mm. there are people who work in highly stressful environments stock traders high pressure some surgeons and doctors sadly because they see trauma every day and they don't get adequate counseling they drink A they lot. do drugs to numb the pain the pain uh, and you are saying the way you make money is very important because it's mm. going to affect how you spend the money so you can imagine what you're saying back breaking work So the first thing you want to do is suit the back. <laughs> and you suit it with a nice class of something. You know, the yeah, next thing yeah. is you don't want people where you come from to see you as 
a construction worker. Yes, People must see your shoe yeah, and be like, yeah, 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 you know, a, a cousin of mine has been struggling financially. Mm. He lives in an informal settlement and he got a job at a company in Joburg. And I, I, I joked, I was like, how, oh, how's he mal? Give us money, how's he mal? He's like, ah, oh, so I spend it all. I'm like, on what? I have to buy diesel and diesel. I can't afford diesel. Diesel. He lives in a shack where the rent is 150 rand a month. He's like, when he got paid, he went to Eastgate into the diesel shop because sure. this becomes the fantasy of, I live in such dire poverty. It's the argument with our politicians and, and people that have been oppressed for so long, new money. You have been oppressed for so long that as soon as you get a bit of money, you want to almost run as far away. If you heard that your father never could afford a car yeah. or a horse or a bicycle, you now want to buy the most fanciest car you can because of that trauma. I remember a friend of mine speaking about his father couldn't afford shoes. Shakes. He couldn't afford shoes. And what that could affect you is, why, why do you have 50 pairs of sneakers? Yeah, Because my father never had no. shoes. And you're like, yo, be careful of how you make your money or the trauma because that, so I think it explains that, but we need to heal. We need to heal. And fix. You know, you know the scary part of what you're saying is look, we grew up under apartheid. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I've healed. M most of us have not healed. And the, the scary thing is, I'm at 2000, are not aware of the trauma they're carrying that they inherited. In I'm, some of the decision making yes. they're making. I'm, I'm not sure if I've healed because apartheid was a traumatic thing. I mean, the things that we've experienced in the township are not supposed to be experienced by people. And I'm not sure if I've healed. And you know, the fact that I think about that, it really, really, really scares me. You know? And, and, I, and I, here's the part, I don't know what to do to heal. So hence, I, I am always aware and I'm always checking, why did I make the decision that I made? For me, making decisions and making mistakes, I want people to make decisions. I hate indecision. But one of the things that is a challenge to me is to sit down and say, why did I make the decision that I made? And what is the ripple effect in the long, in the long run? Yes. Is it going to lead me in yes. a straight line? Yes. Because once I get to know why, and then I, the second question is, what is the effect? You spoke about service, and one yeah. of the, my favorite bits about our last sit-down was speaking about how you volunteered to lead in your community, which yes. is something yes. all of us need to do. They we call it active do. citizenry, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, I've joined Afri Forum as a paying member. I get attacked for that all the time. It's fine. In joining Afri Forum, I'm contributing because I appreciate the work they're doing yeah. and the example they are, not just to Afrikaners, but yeah. to all South Africans yeah. of the power of crowdfunding, yeah. solving problems. And once you've decided that yeah. this is our people and our mandate yeah. to protect that, I know, for example, black people in this country, they don't know what that means anymore. What it means to have a leader that cares for you and to have a mandate and to crowdfund. I want to say this. Speak about service. Yeah. One of the things I've learned, no, I want to put it this way. I have hacked one of the secret, one of the secrets of AfriForum. Mm. AfriForum has over 300,000 members, I think. Yeah. Which on average contribute about 100 to 150 mm. rand a month. Mm. So when you do those numbers, that's 30 million to 45 million rand a month. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a crazy amount of money. Yeah. And it's nothing compared to what we can do. Ah, come on. We you can, can actually put together Imalia Masont or the churches, yeah. Amastok Fela, yeah. yeah. the funeral parlors, yeah. uh, Ikruv. Yeah. If you were to put all of that. Yeah. So one of their secrets, so 30 to 45 million is what they yeah. collect. One of the secrets to Afri Forum's success lies in volunteering and community service. Yeah. Volunteering and community service, which is done for free, they don't even need to touch the thirty-five to, to the thirty to forty-five million because their members, their are members say them. we will patrol for free yeah. in our communities. We will. I, I have a yeah. lawnmower. We'll go I cut. will cut grass for free. Yeah. I will contribute, but and I'll I, also I'll cut, cut for free. grass for free. We need someone to coach yeah. rugby, I'll cricket. Coach the the, I will for coach free. for free. I'll go close the pothole for free. For free. Uh, Ernst van Sale, uh, one of the young leaders in Afri Forum, yeah. amazing young man, mm. speaks about the idea of one hour per week only. Speak about one hour of meditation a day to listen. Yeah. 
one hour of community service a week. A week. And That's if you enough. can get everyone to do it, yeah. everyone, people will think you guys are selling drugs, you're lying, you're yeah. funded by. Yeah. Because true wealth lies in human beings and human labor and ingenuity. Collaborating. Yeah. And if we're living in a community where we have lawyers, accountants, doctors, teachers, construction workers, uh, plumbers, electricians, mm -hmm. all these things, mm -hmm. people that can work with their hands, that can grow, and you're like, for my one hour per week, I'm going to help in the community mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. For my one, my one hour, I'm going to call the community yeah. together and teach you guys accounting things that can help you. Yes. I'm going to help you guys with your tax. I'm a school teacher, so all the kids struggling with maths, one hour per week, I'm going to teach those kids that are struggling yeah. for. Don't pay me because I know to what you're saying about the interconnectedness, it is going to come back to me. My child, my family, the reason there's no crime, the reason the grass was cut, the reason my child got a sponsor, the reason this and that is because someone else volunteered one yeah. hour. Yeah. We call it Ubuntu. Vusi Temogayo spoke about Fargin mm. from the Jewish community. Yes. We have lost it. Look, it, I, I, I don't know where we Alfred lost Forum's it. Our Forum's secret, secret weapon, I want people to understand yeah. this, is the volunteers and the community service. Yeah. Never mind the crowdfunding and the money. Some of, I could be wrong here. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Some of the people that do some of the legal work don't charge the rates they charge, or maybe they do pro bono work because they believe in the vision so much. Look, uh, I will tell you my life story. Uh, growing up in Tembisa, there's this old man called Babu Smelani. May his soul rest in peace. He's late. This guy worked at the construction company, owned a small construction company then. Had a 1400 baki. He was the, the deacon in the church. So we were a member of the church. So what he did, he took young men. He said, in Konzo, in Ciso, the, the, the service of young men. Mm. Every week on Wednesday and Saturday, we are at his house. Wednesday uh, at half past six, he comes back from work. He teaches us for an hour. Every Wednesday without fail for a period of five years. And Saturday, he gives us an opportunity to preach. He gives us an opportunity to, 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 to make a prayer and be with him. And we spend the whole Saturday with him. You know, out of the, the, the guys that is coached, I think it's eight of us. All of us are good people in the community. Mm. All of us made it. And all of us up until today, we are speaking about that guy. That guy was not rich. He had uh, five, no, six girls. You know, he was not a rich guy, but he, he understood, you know, everything that, and, and the, set, the, the, the funny part is that every time I conquer or I do something that is great in my life, the first person that I reported to is my mom and my dad, and the next person is Babu Smilani. Mm -hmm. I'll drive wherever I am and say, Daddy, now I'm promoted at work, I'm this and that and that. And he'll be so happy. He'll hug me. He'll do all those things. And that thing was infectious. And, 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 and it got to me to say, look, this guy did not have to do this thing. Mm. You know, he did not have to do this thing. And, and another story that I have, there's a teacher who taught us maths. That guy was good. But he belonged to a Tembisa High School. And Tinabesengeke Tembisa High School, mm. where at the other school. But every afternoon on Friday at his house, Ekaraj, We'll go there and he teaches meds. And we'll go there for free. Hmm. So we'll walk and we'll go there and he taught us meds. Remember, there was scarcity of meds teachers. At my school, we did not have a meds teacher. Hmm. We actually taught ourselves meds. The, 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 the kids who did metric before us, because they did not go to university, they come back and they explain the issue, the meds issue. And then they taught us meds. That's beautiful. And that's how we got to learn meds because we did not have a meds teacher. We did not have a physics uh, teacher hmm. then. And we'll have this guy's teachers, and we'll have that guy also teach us on Saturdays. Mm. So it, it, was, it was a beautiful thing to watch. So what we are saying, this is where we've lost it as a community. Mm. You know, this, this thing of me, myself, and I has killed the black community. And I don't know where it came from. Mm. Because if we were not united, and if we did not appreciate the spirit of Ubuntu and volunteerism we would have not uh, survived the onslaught of apartheid. Mm. The only way we survived that onslaught was because I knew that if my mother did not teach for me, I can go next to Nyozanab. Mm. And, and they will not ask me questions. Oh, 
Wauzo lala, the audition is, and I'll go and play, you know? But we've lost that thing. We, we've lost that thing. And I, I, I hung and I want that thing so much, such that I've done something that people don't do. You know, most you've been to my house. I've showed you there's a small gate. Yes. I did that thing because I am practicing and I want to practice Ubuntu. Yes. I built the, the fence that separated me and my neighbor's house, and I put a small gate there. And I took a key and I gave it to her and I said, Mama, Granny, here's your key. Should you experience any problem, you come and open this gate and knock. Should you want to greet me, you don't have to have a reason. You don't have an appointment. You don't need to make an appointment. I'm your neighbor mm. and I'm going to do the same. White people. White people. Beautiful. And I open the gate and I go next door and I speak no kokonom kulu and then I, I give them uh, veggies from my garden. They give me veggies from their garden. They give me flowers. They come and check me. I haven't seen you in four days. Are you okay? I'm okay, Koko. If somebody's there to deliver something and there's no one in my house, you know what I do? Go next door. Mm. Leave it there. Koko will open the gate and put it at my door. So this is what happens when you when 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 you really understand the concept that I can't be if if Penwell is not. Yes. Ubuntu. If really, honestly, Penwell, if you don't make it, I, I I'm as good as dead. Yeah. I tell I, I I I go yesterday I was speaking to a guy at the funeral. He's is his busy arranging things, but he's carrying a can of Henneken. Mm. Guys, I hate alcohol with passion. I like, I can't help myself. I hate that thing. That yeah. thing is killing my nation. It's, the, it's, it's one of the biggest drugs it's, in, in it's, the it's, country. It's, it's a pandemic, that thing. That thing necessitates a shutdown in the country. That's a pandemic. If you think COVID is a pandemic, you don't know what we are talking mm. about. This thing is a pandemic. So this guy walks, he's carrying a can, and I, and I call him and I said, young man, you must not do this thing, man. Mm. But you know why I'm reprimanding you? I'm reprimanding you for selfish reasons. I'm reprimanding you because I like me. Yes. If I'm old and 70, now you are 30, 40, who's going to look after me if you are going to be what you are? I depend on you. So when people want to be selfish, they don't understand that thing, that this thing is a chain. If one uh, link in the chain is weak, the whole chain is useless. Yes. The whole chain is useless. So if you don't, if you don't make it your personal mission mm. to make sure that number one, you are good. Number two, you make sure that you create environments that people can be good. And number three, you tell people that they have to be good. Mm. Then you are in for a surprise. I see value about my daughter. Yeah. In, in, well, in, in, the, in the process of closing, the compounding of good and bad actions mm. and decisions mm. The idea that I don't care about the neighbor's kids mm. at all. But I know that if I invest in them, they will be our neighborhood security. Yes. They will educate my kids when I can't. Yes. They will feed my family when I can't. Exactly. Um, if ever they become successful, who knows? You do it selfishly. Versus if you don't do that, they will be the ones to break into your house. Exactly. They are the ones that are going to abuse alcohol and run over your child. Because you thought turning a blind eye, ah, those are not my kids, I'm not interested. Well, it's going to be your problem when your child is dead. It's going to be your problem. When, when they're the ones mugging you because they're desperate. They will Because you were, you were the only rich family in the neighborhood. They will and it was you. nice. So that's, that's fundamentally important. Um, one of my wishes while I'm alive is to infiltrate as many wealthy people as possible. Yeah. I've spoken about how new money is not trained. Black, white, Indian, color, it doesn't matter. They are not trained on the concept of the value chain of humanity and why it is important to pay tax, to donate, not just your money, but your time and your skills, mm -hmm. why you need to create jobs. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of wealthy people that I meet, especially young black money, they don't see the point. I'm not religious. Why must I donate to a church? Why must I give to a school? I mean, people mm. pay school fees. Mm. They don't understand that. Mm. And I need them to understand this thing we're speaking about now, that if you as a person that owns the resources, money, labor, etc., if you don't create a conducive environment 
there's that line of at some point the poor will get so desperate that they'll eat the rich. Yes. Do it for selfish reasons. Look, here's another thing that people discount. People discount this mentality that we've been drilled, that has been drilled on them for years of scarcity. Hmm. You know, once you get rid of thinking that things are, are scarce, then you'll start behaving different. An abundance mindset. An abundance mindset. I tell you, there's no scarcity. The scarcity is in your mind. Hmm. Things are in abundance. Water. What, land, if, if, you, if, if you don't believe me, the air that we breathe, you never uh, out, out use it. You'll yes. never. It's there. You can you can you, suck you, it you as can, much you as you want. You can suck it as much as you want. You'll never. I tell you, you'll never. The water that is there, it rains every time. Actually, it rains and it goes to the sea. And it's a cycle. It it continues. The land, the animals, you you, you can't there's there's abundance. No, once you understand that there's abundance, there's no need to hog. Mm. Because being rich is not a problem. I want to be rich. Mm. You know, and I want to be like filled the rich. <laughs> but I don't want to hog the riches. Yes. There's a difference there. You can't enjoy your wealth if everyone else is poor. You you can't. You can't be the guy with the big house and cook queen. Where do you go to have fun? You Where know, do your kids go to school? You know. Who, 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 Where do you go to enjoy anything? Who's because going to understand you? Who's going to understand you? I tell people that there's, there's this thing that is wrong that we, we don't want to talk about and acknowledge. You know, when you look at countries where there were, there were people who were enslaved by, by the West yes. and, 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 and Europe. I tell you, those Africans, the Europeans did not come in and capture those people. Those people were captured by other Africans and sold. They were sold. You're opening a can of worms now. I tell you, just think about it logically. Let's well, it's a can of worms because yeah. we're trying to close, but this is a very big topic. No, but let's just think about it. Just yeah. think about it as we close. Just yeah. think about it that here is a ship. Even if it can have 100 men with guns, it goes to a land number one that they don't know. Mm. It's a jungle. Mm. And the natives are there and the natives are dangerous. Yes. You know, who would go there? Who under, you must understand the territory, number one. Mm. Number two, you must understand the language there. Ne number three, you must understand... Lots of things because you, before you can actually even go in, mm. you know, if you listen to the story of how South Africa was conquered, you know, by the Dutch, mm. the Dutch did not come in with the gun. They came in with commerce and they started doing business with South Africa. And they changed along the way mm. and took over because they were now having the locals. Mm. You know, when you listen to the wars, San Juan, you know, there are Sutus in KZN. Mm. You know how the Sutus get to KZN and Abom Fuke and Abom Lakwan? Because they were the Sutus that who fought, who fought against the Zulus with the whites. So the white people could not conquer Africa alone. It was Africans who sold Af other Africans to white people. Hmm. We're still doing it to this day. If you look at if, if, if you look at it, it's still happening. Who's sending children to certain institutions which demonize who you are? sending their children to certain companies that have been exploiting and oppressing and taking from exactly. certain communities historically. If you look at parents that are celebrating sending their children overseas to go be exploited, you think it's amazing, but it's, it's crumbs. It's crumbs. My child works in America and oh, they, they earn this much and you're like, it's just a fancier form of, of chaining. Exactly. The chains are now made of gold. Exactly. And they glisten and we call them a car installment and we call them a bond. You know? And we call them you private know? schooling, you know? expensive fees. But you when you look at what's being taken from your child and you're the one sending them there and you're clapping hands it and your child is falling into depression and committing suicide and you can't diagnose it and it's yeah. you're the one that sent yeah. them there. You're the one yeah. that's celebrating that uh, she looks a certain way on Instagram yeah. and she gets yeah. 50,000 likes. Yeah. And when things happen to her and men do things to her, you don't look at your role. You don't look at your role, that you're the one who gave the merchant your child to be enslaved. Matondo, I look forward to sitting down with you again soon. I know you and I can chat for long. No, we can't. And can. I, I hope we, we will chat for long, but we need to chop it up because we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. I, I know one of the things I want us to speak about is the wealth on this continent, natural wealth, um, starting with places like Zimbabwe. I want to go there, Chief. Um, we haven't even started exploring what's in Lesotho, um, what's in Mozambique, what's in Namibia, what's in Botswana, and then go further up north. Africans need to sit down and congregate around how do Africans colonize 
the Democratic Republic of the Congo mm. for the benefit of Africans. Yes. Because it is a war zone along with Sudan yeah. and it is enriching foreign nations. Foreign nations. And Africans need to take a foreign mindset mm. and colonize the DRC mm. for the benefit of Africans because that is the world we're living in. Hey, Chief, you know, you're studying a new thing. You know, when Opening I, a new can of worms. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, uh, and 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 I went to school and I did engineering and I and I read, so I knew that you know running a, a gold mine and, and diamonds, it's it's illegal. But you know now I look at these things and I check and I'm like, why is having a diamond illegal? Why is it illegal? Why is Who it illegal? Who decided that? Who decided that? Why why is having digging out gold on the ground? Why is it illegal? Why is it illegal? Who put Rutendo? And, and, and I went to Zim. Where is Rutendo? And I get to Zim. The guys are taking coal and they are running their small generator. They are refining and they are taking this coal to the market. And they are selling it like outsell. Uh, uh, I'm a banana, cabbage. cabbage. Yeah. And they go back and they are with them. And I'm like, I mean, this is how it's supposed to be. Yes. I, I, sh I shouldn't be excluded. Yes. Why should I have a license to do that? Yes. I mean, it's it's working there. They don't have a license. And I'm like, oh, oh. Artisanal miners. Amazam, amazam. Yes. All these things are just methods of exclusion yes. that are designed by those who want to run the system to say, okay, it's illegal. Don't even think about it. You know, I, I, I grew up up until I was almost 40. I never thought good I could do gold mining. Yeah. And it sounds complex. And it sounds and complex huge. and huge. And it's something that... Owning a bank. You know, it's, oh, it's, a bank. You know, it's something that... Umasho Nisa is a bank. You must go and be, become an artisan and work at the mine yeah. and get the pension. And But you as an individual can't start that thing. To and mine I, requires, if it's not on the surface, it requires a spade, a shovel. That's full, it. Full stop. And and, and now, now that I can see these things, you know, it's critical in closing, final, final closing. No, no. It's critical for people to see. Because once you see, it challenges what you think. 100%. You know, so I, I want to show as many people that just look at this thing and tell me what you think. And then once you start seeing, mm. then it changes what you think. Because I saw, and then I questioned my belief to say, no, man, what I was taught is not what I'm seeing. My gut feel was telling me, stay away from mining. You know, and now I see there, hey, I must go to mining, you know. Mashonisa is a bank. Stockfells are banks. Exactly. I'll, I'll end it there. Okay. Thank you so much, Madonna. Thank you, man. Cheers. Shabban.